Hello students, in this video I will discuss about tall buildings which is in the semester 7 of Mumbai University, theory of, uh, theory of structure 7. So let us have a look, what is a tall building? If a building is higher than the surrounding buildings or the proportion is slender enough to give appearance of a tall building. This is one way of representing or defining a tall building. Now tall building is constructed in the city centers where the land is in short supply and high population density coupled with high land prices and rents. Uh, for example in the city like Mumbai, Delhi or any metropolitan city where the land is uh, in short supply but the population density is very high because the more people coming and flock over these metro cities for their employment and for other career prospect. Point number three about the tall building is one tall building can replace a large area of low rise buildings which can make way for other developments such as community center, sports center or open parkland. So if we if we are constructing or if we can construct one tall building irrespective or instead of a low rise building. So one tall building can substitute or replace a large area of low rise building which can make way for other developments such as community center, sports center or the open parkland. Now let us have a look that what are the challenges and the corresponding advances in the tall building. Now, tall building up to 10 stories. The wind load does not affect much. But after that, that if the building goes beyond 10 stories, the wind load acts as if the building is cantilever with the fixed end at the ground. Cantilever means what? One end fixed and other end free. So, the tall building behave like a cantilever. The fixed end is in ground and the top floor that is free. So, it behaves like a cantilever. So, for that reason, it increases the base movement and for that unexpected deflection due to wind and earthquake cause building to sway and oscillate. So, this creates a discomfort to the residents who are staying over there or the occupants who are staying in the tall building. So, this is the main challenge in the construction of a tall building. But, in recent years, some following advances have been made for which the tall building has become a huge success and it is made safe for the occupants. Number one, design of efficient lateral load resisting system to resist the wind and the earthquake load, which will reduce the sway and the damp vibration. Number two, computer analysis and the modeling the structure for static and dynamic analysis and with that, the model testing in wind tunnels and on shaking tables so that the behavior can be accurately predicted. So, these advances have been made. So, if we are doing the experiment in the wind tunnels or if we are doing the computer simulation for the static and the dynamic analysis, then in case of a wind or the earthquake load happens, how the building will sway or how the building will uh, oscillate. So, if we can predict the behavior and rega with respect to that, if we can uh, give the uh, support, so that will uh, overcome the problems uh, due to the wind and the earthquake seismic load. Number three, development of the rapid construction methods in concreting prefabrication techniques and the drainage provision. This also boost up uh, or this also facilitate in the construction of the tall buildings. Let us have a look at the constraints on the design of the tall building. Number one, maximum building height. Maximum building height, it is decided by the building regulations and the planning laws. For the city it is concerned the, in which city the building is going to be constructed. So according to that city's uh, building regulations and the laws it is decided. Number two the intended occupancy how many occupants are uh, going to uh, we are going to accommodate in that tall building that governs the floor loading and the structural arrangement. Number three, a central core or the shear wall at the appropriate locations, especially where the lifts, stairs, services are provided for the transport of the people. So that part also has to be considered. Number four, very, very important, the fire protection. 
so fire protection of the structural frame and the provision of the separate fireproof compartments for lifts and stairs in steel buildings is mandatory number 5 space between the floor slabs and the suspended ceilings and in curtain walls and courts to accommodate ducts and pipes are required for heating or air conditioning and the last point is the provision of services that uh, is uh, um, in services it comes the lighting power uh telephone television computer networks water waste disposal everything so these forms an important part of the design and must be considered at the planning stage so these are the few points which we have to keep in mind while designing a tall building regarding the construction details number 1 the roofs and the floors regarding the roofs and the floors the cast in situ or the precast concrete slabs or steel beams are used also the composite in situ concrete on steel deck on steel beams are also used in case of wall what what can be what uh, we are using generally structural shear walls located in base on the perimeter around course or in other areas are made of rcc with steel columns non load bearing permanent division and fire resisting walls are made of brick and block work remember this point the movable partitions these are for the room division we know that next one is the curtain wall curtain wall include glazing metal framing metal or precast concrete cladding panels insulation and interior panels next point is the cavity walls with the outer leaf brick inner leaf breeze block these are common for medium rise steel framed building next is the floor beams universal beams are generally designed as composite with concrete on steel deck floors next is the columns universal columns compound and built up sections and circular and box sections can be used for columns for hangers rounds flats or sections in high strength steel or steel cables are used and for bracing all steel open um, or closed sections are used now i will discuss about the different type of structural system uh, which has been incorporated in the tall building structure few minutes before i have told you or i have discussed that due to the wind and the seismic pressure when the wind uh, load and the seismic load is acting on a tall structure the tall building behaves as a cantilever with a fixed end in the ground so to resist this lateral load from the wind and the seismic forces a tube structural system is used in the high rise building now this tube system can be constructed by using concrete steel or a composition of both in its simplest form the what happens that a closely spaced columns are tied together with deep spandrel beams through moment connections as a part of the external perimeter of the building now this tube structure is of um, various types number 1 it is framed tube then it is bundled tube then um, we can uh, see that that is there is tube in tube then there is diagonal tube and uh, then there is an core and outrigger system so one by one i will discuss about the different type of tube systems there are uh, few properties and uh, in real life where we can see the examples of this type of tube system first i will discuss about the framed tube this is the simplest form of the tube uh, system so uh, various type of uh, uh, can be uh, used uh, for the various shapes can be used for it for example square rectangle circular free form any 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 type, any shape the range of the tube uh, system is generally from the 30 meter to 300 meter in height here in the tube system the closely spaced perimeter columns they are interconnected by the beams uh, you will see the diagram in my next slide and the in this tube system the entire building works as a huge vertical cantilever to resist the overturning moment now in this tube system the gravity loading is shared between the tube that is the interior column or walls if they exist now example of this tube system can be uh, found in aeon center world trade center new york times building china world trade center etc next i will discuss about the bundle tube bundle tube what happens instead of one tube 
several individual tube they are interconnected to form a multiple cell tube or a bundle tube that means individual tube items they form a bundled one and uh, together they are more efficient to resist the lateral load and also to resist the overturning moment economically this bundle tube system is very much efficient and they also uh, allows to adopt different interesting shapes now range if we can talk about so it is from the around uh, you can say that 40 meter to 450 meters this is the up to this much height it can be used bundle tube system so here you can see the diagram also so uh, different examples real life examples you can find uh, for this system is the newport tower one magnificent mile tower and burj khalifa etc next i will discuss about the diagonal uh, tube or it is also the breast tube system this is a type of the breast tube system this is also known as trust tube or a exterior diagonal tube system it is uh, utilized for greater heights obviously because it allows a larger spacing between the columns uh, the range of this uh, breast tube system is from 20 to 60 story height up to 60 story it can be used so um, to resist the lateral deflections the simplest method from the intersection of full diagonal bracing or the x bracing here the braces are provided diagonally to share the axial load for the from the more highly stressed columns to less highly stressed column uh, examples of this diagonal tube system we can found it chicago's john hancock then the city grown up center and the bank of the china tower Next, uh, I will discuss about the core and the outrigger system. Outrigger, they are the horizontal, rigid horizontal structure. They actually, they are designed to improve the building overturning stiffness and the strength by connecting the core to the closely spaced outer column. Here, the central core con uh, consists of the shear wall or the breast frame. This type of system is, uh, you can go for more than 70 stories or higher. So here it not only the outrigger system declines the big, uh, building deformations resulting from the overturning moment developed but it also is very it is very much efficient in achieving the resisting forces in for resisting the wind and the seismic forces examples of this outrigger system core and outrigger system we can found in Shanghai tower uh, which is around 600 meter tall then Taipei 101 around 500 meter tall and Burj Khalifa 828 meter tall so these are the diagram of the core and the outrigger system now I will discuss about the tubing tube system uh, the tubing tube is also known as hull and core system here why why it is called as hull and core there is it consists of a core tube inside the structure which holds all the services and utilities such as lift staircases firefighting etc the outer one the exterior tube system they take care that take care of the majority of the gravity and the lateral loads so here you can see the diagram over here this um, hull and core system or the tubing tube system uh, here you can go for up to uh, more than 50 story to 60 story example is 783rd avenue which is there in the manhattan so that's all for the tall building um, for the same semester semester 7 toss uh, theory of structure 7 for mumbai university please see my other videos uh, on combined footing design of combined footing design of pile foundation bearing capacity of pile foundation uh, earth pressure uh, active earth pressure uh, passive earth pressure then the proportion design proportion of the counter foot retaining wall cantilever retaining wall and uh, earthquake resistance structures there are two videos one in one video i have discussed about the theory and uh, the other video i have discussed about the different numericals uh, part one and the part two is coming up so please uh, subscribe and uh, my channel uh, so that you can get all the notifications that i am going to put up so the numericals uh, part two for the earthquake resistance structure i am going to upload very soon so thanks for watching